Congress is getting involved in the Ethiopia Airlines investigation. Many are questioning the FAA and how pilots are trained. Dozens of middle school students on the west side are facing emergency expulsion. That's after a riot at the school. More than 100 law enforcement officers were in court. They turned out to support one of their own. Five a.m. on our Tuesday morning. Welcome to Cren 2 Morning News. I'm Jen York and I'm Brittany Bailey. Well, we are tracking breaking news this morning. A fire at a petrochemical storage plant near Houston, Texas is still burning this morning. We track this story as breaking news yesterday as well. This is a live look at the scene. It doesn't look like anything has changed I mean, in the past 24 to 48 hours here. Flames and smoke are still shooting into the sky as you can see. That fire started on Sunday and since then more than half a dozen storage tanks have burned. Those tanks are holding components of gasoline, nail polish remover and paint thinners. Firefighters estimate with the amount of fuel that's still available, the fire will burn for at least a few more days. And people who live in that area say they are worried that they are breathing in smoke and ash, but experts say the plume of smoke is so high up that it is not affecting air quality. Last time we checked, the Deer Park area was in the moderate range. Many agencies are monitoring that situation in Texas. Two school districts in the area canceled school yesterday, but are reopening today. And as Jen mentioned, we could be looking at live video from yesterday or live looks. We could be looking at mm -hmm. video. It looks exactly the same as if nothing has changed in more than 24 hours. Just a massive. terrible situation. It almost looks like it is bigger. Maybe it's just this angle because we were getting a view yesterday, mainly right. the street view. This is an aerial view where you get a better uh, perspective of just how large this fire is. And really all they can do is stand back and wait for this to burn off at this point. Mm -hmm. They have defensive stance and they're in defensive mode. You can see multiple lines of water being streamed onto the flames, just not doing wow. much of anything. Incredible. Mm. All right, we'll be checking in on that throughout the morning. Now coming up on 502, we want to check in with Evan Arani in the Weather Center. He has a look at our forecast on this Tuesday, your yeah. favorite day of the week. Oh, I know. And uh, this is uh, new this morning and likely the first of many. We have a flood warning, our first flood warning of the season now in effect to start off our Tuesday. This is for central Yakima County. So keep in mind, most of the areas are staying fine. Uh, we are seeing temperatures pretty well above freezing uh, to start off our Tuesday morning. Morning, but the important thing is to recognize that uh, this flood warning is only over central Yakima County. Uh, it is until 4 a.m. tomorrow, so about 24 hours on that, as we are seeing streams and creeks begin to flood uh, into this morning. This was uh, reported late last night and uh, is likely to continue as these temperatures stay above freezing. And uh, you can see that's pretty widespread around uh, the region. 36 degrees right now in Spokane, 38 in Pullman, 33 in Pomeroy. So as these overnight lows rise above freezing, we see the consistent uh, thawing and melting of snow rather than a little bit of a break. We used to get that little bit of a break in the overnight hours where it was only melting and uh, thawing for about five or six hours in the afternoon. Now it's kind of consistent. So as we see uh, these snow melt uh, levels amp up, we're going to continue to see the threat of flooding around the area. It's 503 right now. You can see the 12 hour forecast is showing that uh, 60 degrees could be that afternoon high. If we hit 60 degrees, it will be the first time since uh, October of last year that we saw an afternoon high in the 60s that we are expected to rest just shy of it at the Spokane Airport around 59 degrees for that afternoon. So uh, we're still keeping tabs on this, but obviously those temperatures already this morning a little bit warmer than we had anticipated previously. We're continuing to track this and coming up. We're talking about some moderate air quality around the region. That is a surprise this morning. That is coming up in just a bit. It's 503. I'll send things over to Cody Crawford checking up on traffic for our Tuesday morning. Hi, Cody. Good morning. Taking a look outside, we can see normal road conditions right now. And if you're about to start your commute this morning, it's looking like there's no real heavy traffic yet on the roadway, so you should be good to go, leaving at a normal time to work. That is all I have for now, so I will send it back to the studio. Cody, thank you. This morning, federal authorities are stepping into the Ethiopian Airlines crash investigation. They are asking questions about how the 737 MAX jet was deemed safe to fly in the first place. They are telling employees at Boeing and the FAA to keep any documents related to the plane's approval process. Congress plans to investigate. Pilot training is also being called into question. CBS News reports U.S. pilots were initially given only 56 minutes of training on an iPad. 
That training laid out the differences between new Boeing MAX planes and the older models. Ethiopian transportation authorities are still working through the data from the black boxes, but the initial data shows similarities between the Ethiopian Airlines crash and last year's Lion Air crash. Safety is at the core of who we are at Boeing, and ensuring safe and reliable travel on our airplanes is an enduring value and our absolute commitment to everyone. When an accident happens, for any reason, we focus relentlessly to determine why. Boeing CEO is offering condolences to the victims of the deadly crash in Ethiopia. Dennis Molenberg says Boeing is working with authorities to support the ongoing investigations. He also added Boeing will release a software update soon, as well as add more pilot training for the 737 MAX. More than two dozen students on the west side are facing emergency expulsion this morning. This is after a riot at a Vancouver middle school. On Friday, more than 30 officers were on scene. Police reports show teenagers were spitting at officers, hitting them and using racial slurs. Nine students are facing charges. Now those charges include assault and resisting arrest. The mom of one of the boys facing charges says things just got out of control. It was a fight and it was a bad, bad decision. And, you know, a lot of the kids, I think, you know, are good kids mm -hmm. and kids make bad decisions. Um, and hopefully they learn from this. Vancouver school district leaders say an emergency expulsion is applied when a student is considered a threat or a disruption to the school or their self. Now, the expulsions last up to 10 days while the district investigates. School administrators are reviewing video footage of that incident, and they say the behavior displayed will not be tolerated and every student involved will be held accountable. It is a bond only those in law enforcement can explain. Montana Highway Patrol troopers and Missoula County Sheriff's deputies filled a courtroom to show support for Trooper Wade Palmer. Trooper Palmer is in critical condition after he was shot last week on the job. He was flown to Utah to be treated. Utah officers are standing outside Trooper Palmer's hospital room. But Montana law enforcement officers are showing their solidarity back home. More than 100 people appeared in court for the suspect's initial hearing. As we are a big family, and uh, when this happens, uh, even though Trooper Palmer works for the Highway Patrol, uh, we have his back, and we're here to support him and his family uh, through this horrific uh, ordeal. A bail was set at $2 million for the suspect, Jonathan Birch. 507 now. Well, you may remember them from last fall. The line bikes and scooters around Spokane. The pilot program was a huge hit. Riders clocked nearly 150,000 rides. Well, now the city of Spokane is trying to get a permanent program rolling. But first, city leaders have to make a few amendments to city code to make sure it's safe. And we want to know what you think. Do you want the line bike and scooter program back in Spokane? You can let us know by going to crem.com slash vote or by clicking on the vote now tab on our crim 2 mobile app. Right now, the Spokane City Council is considering a few city code amendments to make it happen. In one amendment, vendors would not have to provide helmets. Instead, operators would have to do outreach and education on safety. Bicycle helmets would be approved for scooter use. Current rules require the use of a motorcycle helmet, according to a release from the city. Another amendment would require people riding scooters or bikes to ride on the streets, not the sidewalks in downtown. But some people say that is too dangerous. I was forced off the road by a driver a few weeks ago, um, and it's scary. Well, that man primarily uses his electric scooter to get around downtown. He says he understands the potential issues with riding on the sidewalk. He thinks the city, though, should allow people to ride on the sidewalk up to a certain speed. Well, looks like right now three quarters of you are saying, yeah, bring them back. All right. With the bikes and the scooters. Mm -hmm. I still need to get out and ride one sometime. I will say I tried the scooters. I'm terrible at it. I was going, you know, one mile an hour and it was real Because they go pretty fast, they, right? They haul. <laughs> yeah. So I, the scooters weren't for me, but I did ride the bikes a lot, mm -hmm. especially with the e-assist getting up the south hill right. riding around. It was pretty wonderful. All right, we'll see. Of course, we'll be tracking this <laughs> yes. and letting you know what happens as things move along here. 509 now on this Tuesday. Well, a New Jersey man just returned an overdue library book. He says it has been with him for decades. Well, MySpace is apologizing to its users. 
The company may have lost 12 years worth of your data. And we could be seeing the warmest temperatures since October by tomorrow. Find out what to expect as we head towards the remainder of your work week and your upcoming weekend.